Hi, everybody. It's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today, we're getting into topic 1.5, and that is on lipids. And the two pictures I have on the screen, right in the title screen here, are uh, phospholipids, and I have a sterol over there, or a steroid. Um, and you can kind of tell that uh, these phospholipids over here that are making up this bilayer, which is part of a plasma membrane, uh, they don't look very similar to uh, this lipid over here. They are very structurally different. And uh, by extension, you know, structure and function is a thing in biology. They also have very different functions, but nonetheless, they are both lipids. So lipids are kind of a mixed bag when it comes to uh, our four main groups of biomolecules. All right, the carbohydrates is pretty straightforward. Um, they have some basic functions. They have some basic shapes here, but uh, lipids get a little more varied a little bit. Um, but the thing that ties lipids all together is that they're all nonpolar or hydrophobic organic molecules. And as I said before, they have different functions depending on depending upon how they are assembled. Um, so how they are put together determines their function. There's your structure and function theme again. And they have a wide variety of functions, but the main thing that they have in common is what I put right at the top here, is that they're all nonpolar or hydrophobic. Um, so remember from 1.1, water is a polar molecule. It has polar covalent bonds. It has a slightly negative side, a slightly positive side. Now, all the molecules that we're talking about in this topic are nonpolar which means they don't interact with polar substances. Nonpolar substances only interact with nonpolar substances. Polar substances only typically interact with polar substances. Um, hence, lipids are what are called hydrophobic. They're afraid of water or they're, they're water fearing, hating, whatever. Um, they don't interact with each other. So if you've ever done an experiment before where you pour vegetable oil um, in a glass of water and you stir them together, there's no way that those ever go, are going to mix ever um, because they don't interact with each other. They are too chemically different um, because of what's called their polarity, right? So all of these lipids are nonpolar and that's the main thing that they have in common. Um, they're a mixed bag structurally and functionally. Um, there's some in here, these are cholesterol and then I guess these are just like, you know, oil bubbles or something. I don't know, I just put it in there. Um, but here's, here's another thing about lipids. They are such a mixed bag, right? Um, in terms of their function. And we can't also really say that they all have one monomer, um, because fatty acids, uh, while they are a monomer of lipids, they are not the monomer of lipids, right? So like carbohydrates, for example, the monomer of carbohydrates is a monosaccharide. Um, and so I put a bunch of monosaccharides together, I get a polysaccharide. But if I put a bunch of fatty acids into a chain together, I don't get a poly poly fatty acid or something like that um so lipids are kind of weird but fatty acids are a monomer because if you put some of them together with other molecules you can form some very functional lipids um so a fatty acid is a type of monomer of lipids and it's basically just a hydrocarbon chain that's right so just carbons with hydrogens bonded to them that's pretty much it that's what fatty acids are and then they have a what's called a carboxyl group at one side i'll show you what that is um, but fatty acids are found in two types of lipids they're called found in fats and they're found in phospholipids wait what's the difference between a fatty acid and a fat I'll show you. I'll, we'll get there. Hang on. Um, so, and there's two types, two main types of fatty acids based on how many double bonds that they have between the carbons in that carbon chain. Um, so you may have heard in, you know, uh, supplement commercials or like, I don't know, some kind of product. They, they talk about their uh, omega-3 fatty acids, things that you can find in like fish and avocados and stuff. Um, what exactly are those? Well, hopefully we'll get a better idea by looking at the basics here of uh, fatty acids. The first of which is called a saturated fatty acid. And here's a picture of it. Now, here's the thing in organic chemistry. Uh, organic chemists, there's so much carbon and hydrogen in um, organic molecules that it would take way too long to try and draw every C and every H and every organic molecule. So a lot of times they're just kind of skipped over a little bit. Um, and so this whole zigzag right here that I'm kind of highlighting is, um, is a hydrocarbon, right? It's just carbons and hydrogens attached to them. And that's pretty much it. So, right. So this is CH2. This is, you know, this is CH2. This is CH2 all the way down to CH3 um, down here. And this right here, this is a C to double a carbon, double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to a, what's called a hydroxyl. So this over here is called a carboxyl group. Again, you don't have to know that, um, but just, you know, giving you the facts here about a fat saturated fatty acid, right? So it's a, it's one of these with a long chain of hydrocarbons 
kind of what you can see with this animation down here. Um, but here's the thing, the saturated fatty acid, what's distinctive about it is that it only has single bonds between the carbon atoms um, over here. There's only single bonds. But when you get to unsaturated fatty acids, if you've ever seen those on a nutrition label before, um, what distinguishes saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids is that unsaturated fatty acids have a double bond, at least one double bond um, in their carbon chain. All right. And uh, this, these double bonds end up having a really big impact on both the structure and the function, you know, because it's biology, um, of the fatty acid. All right, so check out this unsaturated fatty acid over here. It has one double bond between the carbon chains, and look what happens. It causes this bend or this kink in the carbon chain, um, and it doesn't form this ni nice straight line or this zigzaggy line um, all the way down, and it kind of forms this, this kink or this bend. All right. Um, and as such, uh, if you're trying to layer up these, uh, these fatty acids and kind of stack them on top of one another, like a, like a stack of papers or something, for example, um, a really crinkled piece of paper is not going to stack very well. So these unsaturated fatty acids, if I stick a bunch of them together, they're not going to pack very well together. And that's uh, what lends to their properties. Hey, here's to some, uh, here's some examples of some unsaturated fatty acids. Oleic acid up here is what we would call a monounsaturated fatty acid. Um, because why is it monounsaturated? Mono means one, it's got one double bond. Um, and then linoleic acid down here is a polyunsaturated fatty acid, poly meaning many, um, because it has more than one double bond between its uh, between the carbons in the fatty acid chain. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. Uh, the more double bonds that an unsaturated fatty acid has, um, the more unsaturated it is. And the more unsaturated it is, the more liquid it is at room temperature. Um, so like I said before, bends or the kinks in the carbon chains prevent the packing together of the fatty acids, all right? Try to imagine like a straight piece of paper like a, like a saturated fatty acid is going to stack very nicely, but if not if it's all bent and creased and that kind of stuff. And that's what those double bonds do. Um, so because they don't pack together very nicely, they tend to be more liquid at a room temperature. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a sidebar here, uh, but this is also why unsaturated fats are tending, tend to be considered the healthy fats versus saturated fats tend to be the unhealthy fats, all right? Because saturated fats tend to be solid at room temperature, while unsaturated fats tend to be liquid because of their double bonds. Now, uh, this is the, the question that I pose to my students when we're talking about this. Uh, what would you rather have running through your arteries? Something that so tends to be solid or something that tends to be liquid? Well, you probably want the thing that's going to be liquid, right? Because your blood has to flow from your heart to your lungs to your brain and everywhere else and all your muscles, et cetera, in your body, right? So it's probably better to have liquid in your blood than solid in your blood, which could block it up and cause problems. So that's why, generally speaking here, unsaturated fats are the way to go. You want those double bonds to prevent those, uh, those lipids from packing together and forming solids. Okay, speaking of which, uh, so fatty acids are a monomer. They're not the monomer of lipids, um, but they are a monomer. And in fact, if you take three of these fats, or uh, excuse me, three of these fatty acids, and you put them together and you attach them to a molecule called glycerol. Again, this is not on the exam, but I'm tr trying to be precise here. Um, if you take three of them and you attach them to another molecule called triglyceride, Glycerol, you get something called a triglyceride, um, which is a lipid responsible for energy storage and some other cellular functions, right? So these are fats, okay? So unsaturated fats are fat molecules, triglycerides, that have uh, an unsaturated fatty acid, while saturated fats are fats that don't have a saturated fatty, or excuse me, that don't have unsaturated fatty acids, Okay, um, but either way, all right, here's, uh, here's three fatty acids over here represented by these R groups. Um, they're responsible for energy storage, okay? And uh, in some mammals, they provide insulation, like my friend the walrus over here. He's got blubber um, to help keep him warm, okay? So that's, a, that's another big function of fats for, for uh, some mammals. Okay, uh, but the main thing is energy storage. Now, another type of lipid that has nothing to do with fatty acids because it's not made from fatty acids um, are steroids. And steroids are lipid molecules that are used to make hormones. Um, so here's the deal about, uh, about steroids, right? You hear this word and you think, oh, like, you know, getting swole, you know, uh, like cheating in sports, et cetera, um, promoting muscle recovery. Um, and that's kind of what it does, right? A little bit. Um, these steroids provide the chemical basis for your uh, for your cells to build hormones that allow your, well, 
your muscles to grow. It's going to result in growth hormone and um, some other hormones that are associated with muscle growth and strength and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's why it's cheating. Um, but anyway, hormones are not just for, steroids are not just for uh, for building muscle or whatever, cheating in sports. Um, they are the precursors for hormones. And we're going to spend a whole unit talking about um, cell signaling, but hormones are a type of signal that cells send to each other, right? So you have glands in your brain um, and above your kidneys and all over the place. Uh, in your pancreas is a, is a gland that sends out hormones, which are chemical messages to tell other body parts what to do. We're going to talk about this a lot in unit four, so I'm going to save it for then. Uh, but I put here, they're long distance cell signaling molecules responsible for growth and development, metabolism, and homeostasis. Um, and we're going to talk about all of those things in unit four quite at length. Um, so yeah, that's what hormones are. Steroids are used to make hormones, okay, which are cell signaling molecules. That's the main thing you've got to know. All right, and then cholesterols are another type of lipid. Um, they're more kind of structurally similar to a, uh, a steroid, again, rather than a uh, like a phospholipid or a fat. Okay, they kind of have these cyclical shapes, but they're still nonpolar. Um, but here's the thing about cholesterols. You can see a few of them right here. Um, let me highlight them real quick. Okay, these structures right here, these are cholesterol. This is a plasma membrane, a picture of it over here. Um, it's got proteins in it, and it's got phospholipids, which I'm going to show you in a second, the phospholipid bilayer. Um, but these orange thingies down here are cholesterol, and cholesterol is responsible for maintaining the stability and the fluidity of, uh, of plasma membranes. They make sure they're nice and fluid so that they can the plasma membrane can do their job. In unit two, we talk about plasma membranes a lot. So I'll save that for then too. Um, the other thing about cholesterol, cholesterol gets a bad rap. You got to you gotta lower your cholesterol, right? Um, too much cholesterol, um, this type of lipid in, uh, in your food can build up particularly a uh, type of cholesterol called LDL or low density lipoprotein um, can end up building up in arteries and causing issues. Um, that's what people talk about when they say, oh, I have to lower my cholesterol um, is the amount of LDL that's in their blood. Okay. Um, and that's a type of cholesterol. All right. But uh, most cholesterols are very good. All right. And that's their main job. All right. So uh, the last type of lipid that we're going to be talking about are phospholipids. And again, we're going to talk about these quite a bit in unit two. So I will save, uh, save a lot of the conversation for then. Um, but these are lipids that when arranged in a bilayer, they form plasma membranes and membranes do a whole lot of stuff. And again, going to save that for unit two. All right. So, but here's two fatty acids right down there. Okay, these can be, uh, oops, these can be saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids. Um, and then you have a phosphate group up here. All right, I want to just put PO4 right there. Um, there's a phosphate group at the top of it, all right? And that gives it some pretty interesting properties. Um, and when you put them together like this, you form, you start to form a plasma membrane, uh, which is a incredibly important uh, part of a cell, part of a whole lot of different organelles and yeah, very important to life on earth. All right, so those are phospholipids and that's a super important type of lipid that we're gonna be covering a lot in this class. All right, so in case you missed anything or I missed anything, here's everything written down. Once again, this is a recap. Uh, lipids are hydrophobic organic molecules that contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and in phospholipids, phosphorus. Um, and they have a variety of functions. We can't just say that they all do one thing. Uh, fatty acid monomers can be saturated or unsaturated. It's not the only monomer, but it's a monomer. Um, saturated fatty acids have no double bonds in their carbon chain, and therefore that makes them nice and straight and straightforward. Um, but unsaturated fatty acids make them uh, um, yeah, kind of have a, a bend or a kink in them um, because of double bonds in that carbon chain. Okay, and more double bonds cause more bends in that chain, and therefore it makes it more liquid at room temperature, and that's why it's considered to be the, the good fat, because it's liquid and it won't build up as much. Um, fats are primary energy storage lipids, um, and they're also used for like insulation and some other cellular functions. Steroids are the precursors, or in some cases they are lipid hormones um, that support many bodily functions, physiological functions. Um, cholesterol is a type of lipid that provides stability and fluidity for cell membranes. Um, and then finally, what we just spoke about were phospholipids, which are uh, lipids made with fatty acids and contain a phosphate group, which contains the element phosphorus, and they help to form cell membranes. They're the main piece of cell membranes. All right, that should be it for 1.5. We are going to get into nucleic acids next for 1.6. Let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.